Good morning and welcome to the Mission Control Center. We are about a year away now from the launch of Scott Kelly to the International Space Station for a year-long stay there. That's going to let scientists here on the ground uh, have the opportunity to gather more data on how the human body is affected by long stays in space. And in this particular case, they're going to have a special opportunity to compare that data here on the ground with someone uh, particularly like Scott Kelly, his twin brother, former astronaut Mark Kelly. We have with us here today uh, Dr. Craig Kuhn who is the uh, Deputy Chief Scientist for NASA's Human, uh, Human Research Program. And he is going to tell us a little bit more about that, uh, that, pro that program. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. So back in November of 2012, the one-year mission had just been announced. And Scott Kelly uh, was announced that uh, mission. And he was meeting with members of the Human Research Program to learn what kind of investigations would be taking place during that one-year mission. In the course of that conversation, he asked, will this involve my twin brother, Mark, at all? And, of course, we hadn't anticipated necessarily a twin selection, so the, imme the first answer was, no, we don't have anything in the queue right now, but let us go think about that. So we reached out to the American scientific community and released a research announcement and received 40 proposals. Oh, nice, 40. Was that a, was that a good number? Yeah, that was an excellent number. We ended up selecting 10, and they range over uh, a broad range of topics from molecular to mental function. Well, tell us a little bit about why having a twin on the ground would be kind of a special circumstance and something that you would, you would be interested in. Well, a classic question is, are our behaviors, our traits due to nature or nurture? What's the balance? And in the case of Scott and Mark Kelly, we have a setup where we have identical twins. So that factor, the genetics, the, the nature part, sure. is controlled. And so we can look at just how the environmental effects uh, impact Scott and Mark and make a more careful comparison between the two than you could with people that aren't identical. So what kind of ideas did you get for the, for the twin studies? Well, the topics fall into four areas. Uh, the first is the molecular area, and that uses things like blood and urine tests that you would have at your doctor's office. So we're looking at DNA, RNA, protein, metabolites, and the like. The next topic area is called the microbiome. So it turns out that we are outnumbered about 10 to 1 by bacteria on our surface of our skin and mostly in our gut. Which is what, this, what we're seeing here on the screen with the... Uh, that's right. And the, and the the bacteria in our gut can have a profound impact on our health and our immune system and can change in response to stress, to diet, um, to disease, to a number of factors. So that's the second area. The third is general overall human physiology. So we're looking at the cardiovascular system, for example, and the fluid shifts that occur when we go into weightlessness. And the fourth area is cognition. Um, so we have a battery of tests that are looking at things like uh, alertness, the ability to manipulate spatial objects in the mind, um, and the like. Okay. So you've got 10 different studies that fall into those four categories. That's correct. Can you tell us a little bit more about the individual studies? Sure. For example, on the molecular end, we have one study that's looking at DNA, and more specifically the ends of the DNA. So our chromosomes are capped at the end by what are called telomeres, special sequences. And as we get older, those sequences shorten. And as we are exposed to stress, they shorten. Okay. So we're very interested to look at Mark and Scott at the beginning of the mission, see what their telomere lengths are like, and what Scott's will be like at the end of the mission. And at the end of the mission, Scott will have accumulated 540 days in space, whereas Mark will have had 54. That's quite exactly, a difference. Yeah, one-tenth the amount. So that's at the molecular level. As I mentioned, in the physiology realm, we're looking at fluid shifts. One of the concerns that we've noticed on the International Space Station with the number of astronauts we've been flying for six months is some have developed some vision problems. Okay. And it, their visual acuity has changed a little bit, and we see some changes in the structure of the eye. The exact causes are not well understood. There are several ideas. And so we'll be studying Mark um, and Scott both with a, a battery of tests that we're using on many astronauts in flight. Okay. Um, is that normally different in twins, their, their, eye, their vision? Is that usually the same, or is it? I think it's usually the same, but okay. uh, in this case, you know, what we've been able to do is, is study a series of astronauts in flight. But here's a case where we can see 
when we compare to Mark on the ground, going through his daily life, his yearly life, with ups and with with various levels of activity, different types of activity, mm -hmm. see how much how stable his readings are in these various measures compared to Scott, who's going through the weightlessness, the confined environment, the exercise regime, et cetera. Okay. Well, what will they have to do, you know, versus, uh, on the ground versus in flight um, to actually participate in the experiments? Well, most of it, or most of the research investigations, most of the studies, um, need either blood or urine or fecal samples. Okay. Um, but in addition to that, there will be some cognitive tests, which are computer run. And then there will be, for the physiology, there's a whole battery of tests that range from ultrasound to MRI um, to more blood measurements and, and, the, and the like. Okay. So it's all pretty standard stuff that they normally would do um, in space as far as the actual collection of the data. That's correct. There okay. is nothing that is a completely new type of sample or measurement. Okay. Any of the particular experiments that you are really um, looking forward to seeing or most interested in what you're going to gather? Well, the most interesting thing to me is that for the first time we're, we're doing what is called omics type of research, where we're looking at DNA, changes in the DNA, there's chemical changes that can occur in res to help regulate genes, RNA, protein, metabolites, looking at all of these in a coordinated fashion and looking at physiological and mental changes as well. Now, with only two subjects, we don't expect any great, great grand conclusion to emerge, but we are in a good position to see some subtle changes that we might not be able to detect if they were not identical twins. So what's really novel about this is bringing all 10 investigations together and in a comprehensive way and looking for correlations at the different levels as we look at spaceflight versus ground. Okay. Well, speaking of you know, the sample size, the number of people we have participating, I know, like you said, that's a little different than usual. So is it, is there, are there follow-ups that you can do? Are there ways that you can make it, um, you know, more applicable or is it, or is this going to be good enough? Well, uh, <clears throat> I don't think, I can't speak for the astronaut selection process in future, but I think it's unlikely this, this will trigger a, 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 great program in twin astronaut <laughs> recruitment. We can hope. <laughs> we can hope. Um, that my, uh, I'm married to a twin and I have twin sisters, so that they might like to see that happen. But um, uh, it's more likely, I mean, the typical study that is done with t twins is done with tens or even on the order of 100 twins. Of course, we just have the twin pair here. Uh, so we're in a good position to s I identify some subtle changes that normally would be masked if we didn't have identical uh, individuals, genetically identical individuals. And that will set up follow-up experiments or studies that will look at those things in more detail and see if they are broad conclusions to be made. So this is really uh, in a, a set of studies that will give us clues, but not unlikely to give us definitive outcomes or results. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm sorry, I have to ask, you said you're, you were a twin yourself and, and married to a twin? Uh, I have twin sisters. Oh, twin sisters. Okay. And they I'm are not to your a twin. twins. Yeah. Okay. So they're I females see. in both sets, but I, I, I so I understand okay. female twin dynamics uh, pretty well. <laughs> All right. All right. Then thanks so much for, for visiting us with, with us. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to hearing more about the studies. My pleasure.